everyone and welcome to a very short video on how to install Debian 9 through PXC using a TFTP server. Why would I need to do that? Well, basically my old laptop died and the one that I have right now, even though it's a little bit old, uh, has, I mean, it's still a reasonable laptop. The only thing is that it, it won't install through CD. I don't want to deal with floppies. And, well, USB, I don't want to format a USB. It's, it's, it's simpler with, with PXC. Now, the thing is that the first time I did this, it took me about an hour or two, because in the past I had to use TFTP to install Debian and I think Windows at one point, and I, I booted also some live distros from PXC. But the point here is that I did not want to deal with with the whole hassle of using solid media. So I said, why not use TFTP? And it's, it's going to be as short as possible. I'm just going to give some some uh, some tips on what to do, what not to do. First of all, this I'm, I'm on a network, so this is going to be way easier. Uh, Originally, I thought that I needed to do this directly because back in the day, I think it had to be like this. Nowadays, just just you can just use a normal router, and that should be it. Uh, as for the for the server itself, wait, there we go. So TFTP D32. Uh, we don't need the the 32-bit version. We need the 64-bit version. You can use the 32-bit version if you want. Uh, but that's usually for older systems, like Windows 95, 98, XP, whatever. And you can actually still do this through Windows 95, 98 if you wanted. Well, you want to do that? I don't know, maybe you have a spare computer that you just want to use as a TFTP server. I've, I've used a Windows 98 computer, Pentium 3, and it works just fine. I uh, recommend using the installer. I already have the installer. I'm not going to download it. Just want to give you the, the site, and if you're wondering what TFTP means, is Trivial File Transfer Protocol. File Transfer Protocol is a protocol used to transfer files from one from a server to a client. TFTP does the same thing, but it's simpler. Uh, one of the things that it that it's simpler, or, or that it makes it simpler, is that it doesn't have authentication or doesn't require authentication, although you can use them. I've seen it, I don't use it, because it's just it's, it's just on the go. Use it, dump it. That's why I don't use the service one, I just use the installer. I could also use the portable one, but, but it does the same thing. Actually, let's see what the portable does. I never used that one now that I think about it. So let's try that one, okay? So we're going to extract that, okay? And wait, wait, wait that folder. Yes to all. Okay. One important thing is whenever you open up TFTPD 64 or 32, whichever you use, do it as an administrator. Right click, browse administrator. Why? Because you need to edit a file. Wow, that's loud. Oops, sorry about that. Hello, access. You're going to need that. You're going to need to be an admin for this. Okay. Go to the settings, first of all. Global. We don't need the TFTP client, we don't need the CLUX server, we don't need the DHCP server. As I mentioned, we already have a, a network. We only need the TFTP server. TFTP. We already have our folder here. Let's see. Netboot. There we go. Uh, in advanced TFTP options, uh, I leave it open to option negotiation, although you can just use PXE compatibility. Don't bind it to anything, because otherwise it's just going to be binded to that, and uh, it's going to be a whole mess. I mean, I could always bind it to the public IP address, or the IP address that I have. I'm just not going to use anything. Just let it come from whatever it has to come from. That's everything that we need to do here. Also, before I forget, security, none. Just none. And now that I think about it, Hold on a minute. Hold on. 
because I I know that this is this is where I'm gonna gonna be screwing it up. Now, even though I said that we don't need the DHCP, I'm gonna enable it for one reason. We do need to provide a particular boot file. So, just PXE Linux zero. Uh, for the IP pull star address, I'm gonna do one and two dot one six eight in standard dot zero dot one hundred. There's a pool 16, lease, eh, it can be whatever, doesn't matter, doesn't matter for the example, Un unless you have a specific reason you might want to do that lower or higher, it depends. Uh, the full router gateway is going to be 1, doesn't make a difference, mask option 255, whoa, 0, there we go, we don't bind to anything, okay. We need to restart, got it. Okay, close that down. Open it up again. If everything is right, we should have all of our configurations. Now the reason again why it, why we do it with uh, administrator writes is because you may not be able to write into the file. And that already happened to me. So I just recommend that for that specific reason. Okay, that's step one. Now, next step. We need to download this, the netboot.tar.gc. If you're wondering where you download that, for a specific case, Steven 9 net. Let's install. Okay, this is the one that we're looking for. Devinderar dot slash or forward slash distrips or slash netist. And in this specific instance, we're looking for i386. And we should be on this side. If you're using AMD64 or whichever else, just use the correct one. I'm using an i386 because this is a 32-bit computer. So if, if, I'm not, if I don't use this, it's not going to work. And you may be wondering what exactly we're supposed to be doing here. We need to go to netboot and download this file. Netboot tar gc. This is going to take a while. Oh, it's already finished. Okay. All right. Now, before we do this, usually we just untar the file like this, just extract and whatnot. But we need to do something here. We need to do. We need to go find WinRAR. Right-click it, run as administrator. Yes, I want to run as administrator. Look for the file. Same thing. Extract. And extract. Well, if you're wondering why I'm doing this, it seems that the symbolic links that we need for the boot up, they don't work. They, I mean, it's not that they don't work, it's, it's just that Windows doesn't understand them, and it doesn't uncompress them. For whatever reason, if you run this as an administrator, it works just fine. Funny story, funny thing, but that fixes the problem, and you should be good to go. So, everything so far is fine. Here in the log viewer we should be seeing the what's going on right now. So, I'm going to turn on the computer. And we should be seeing something. Okay. Discovery. Discovery. DHCP server. That's what we're looking for. Oh, it's going all crazy. You know what happened? There we go. There we go. They're disappearing right now. But what that was about was all the files being transferred.
you always get like a small pop up on it's on the settings actually. Show progress bar, and that's what happens. You see like stuff going all over the place. Let's, let's see that again. I'm just gonna right now. I'm on the installation uh, page. to install right now and there we go it's just transferring the files into the computer and the way it works on the computer itself it's just like a normal installation just like in my tutorial for Debian 9 it just starts up and that's it and that's all that, it, that there is to it so we do need to have the DHCP so I originally thought that I didn't need it, but my suspicion here is that since I'm inside the same segment, because this computer has .0, so instead of the modem router serving the IP address, it's this TFTP server, and also the HTTP server that's serving that. So, if you have the same segment, just remember you to use another segment that's not being used or served by your current device, that should do the trick. Um, I may be recommending you to do something that you should not be doing, don't worry, this is, again, just, just temporary. And another important thing is that the difference, if I recall, from 32 to 64 bit for TFTPD, I may be wrong here, correct me if I'm wrong on the comments, but I think that you can serve larger files with the 64 bit version. I'm not sure. I may be wrong on that, again. But this is what I recall from written it somewhere, probably misread it. That's basically it for that. So, if you have other comments or questions related to this, or if you want to see more info on this, just let me know down in the comment sections. Leave your questions, doubts, uh, anything also that's related to this, just let me know if, if I'm wrong on that. And also remember to like, share, and subscribe, because sharing is caring. So thank you very much, and have a good day.